Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking through seven tips that you need to know before you go solo traveling. Traveling by myself around many countries around the world and it was insane, such a great experience. I'm gonna be talking through everything that I learned on my journey and talking you through it and making you wanna go. It doesn't matter if your friends don't wanna go traveling because you can do it. It doesn't matter. You'll meet so many new people out there and you'll have friends all around the world. Before I get started, follow me on Instagram, DM me if you've got any questions, like this video, subscribe for more videos, and let's get into it. Let's go. Okay, so let's start with tip number one, where to stay accommodation. This is probably one of the most frequent questions I get asked about solo traveling and where you should stay and that is easy, stay in hostels. Hostels is the hub of solo travelers. That's where most majority of solo travelers go to because it's so easy to meet people. Not only do hostels, you sleep with the same people. Not only do you sleep in the same dorm room as people, there's often meals you can eat together like breakfast or sometimes dinner. And so you meet lots of people. There's also day tours you can go on and that is where you meet other solo travelers also staying in hostels a lot of people are in the same situation where they're traveling solo and they want to meet other people so when you're staying in hostels you see a lot of like-minded people and that's who you want to meet the other place to stay is guest houses if the hostel option isn't there because guest houses are a lot more like local than more than hotels and so like the people who own the guest house Will help you and often you do have breakfast together and it's more of a hostel happy environment rather than a hotel and you sleep in one room and you don't talk to anyone so guest houses if there aren't any hostels go for that okay tip number two okay this is one of my favorite tips about solo traveling and that is freedom the freedom you have when you're solo traveling compared to traveling with someone else or in a group is like crazy. You can literally choose when you get up every single day. You can choose to go out, you can choose to skip breakfast, have breakfast, have five meals, six meals, eight meals. You can literally do what you want when you want. If you wanted to suddenly fly across the world, you can do that if you're bored of a country. The freedom you get is just unbelievable and you can't there's no way of having that in a group because you've always got to compromise and make sure that someone else agrees with you. For example, when I was traveling around Southeast Asia, I was in Cambodia and then suddenly these people were going to Laos. So I thought, why not? I'm going to go to Laos with them and I can make that instant decision just like that and just go to another country. Whereas with, uh -huh. if I was with someone, I'd have to wait and be like, do you want to go and discuss it? Well, you can just make spontaneous decisions and that's what makes traveling so exciting. So that freedom, you're going to love it. Oh. Tip number three is download maps or get a SIM card. Because you're by yourself, you don't want to look too much like a tourist. You want to know where you're going. So download maps.me. You basically download the maps of wherever you're going and you can get directions. If you've got internet, if you have no internet, it's perfect. The other thing is if you are alone, maybe get a SIM card just so you're safe and you've always got data or calls so that you can message people to tell them where you are or just find out where you wanna go. It is so good having data. And also the data and like a SIM card in Southeast Asia or in South America is pretty cheap compared to Europe and the US. For example, when I was in Indonesia, I got a SIM card which only cost me £5 a month and I got 10 gigs of data and I got like 500 minutes and like 500 texts, which is amazing value. Um, so definitely recommend getting that data, getting that SIM card. It gives you so much more freedom. Why not? It could save you a lot of money. <laughs> ah, corona time. Tip number four. So one of the biggest questions I also get asked is safety. Is it safe to go by yourself? Is it dangerous? Like my mum's not sure about whether I should go because it's so dangerous being a girl on your own. Obviously I'm not a girl, as you hopefully know, but I've met so many solo female travelers and there are certain places 
especially if it's your first time, you should not go to. For example, India and Sri Lanka can be kind of dangerous and you're likely as a female to get a lot more eyes, as you can call it. You're, let, you're more likely to get quite a lot of attention. So st sticking to countries like Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Indonesia, these countries are so safe for solo female travelers. But of course, that means that you've still got to be careful when going out alone, like you would in your own neighborhood. So that means don't go out by yourself at night. Make sure you're with other people. If you do go out by night, by night, go out at night and don't drink too much. Obviously have a good time, but don't, don't get so drunk that you're like, I don't know where I am because that puts you in danger. And at the end of the day, even if you are with people, you don't know them. You haven't known them for a long time. So just be careful, even though you think it is safe, you never know who it could be. It could happen in your own town. It could happen anywhere. So don't put yourself in danger. There are some ways you can maybe make yourself feel safer. You could wear a fake wedding ring, pretend that you, you're you married and your, your husband's just down the road. Um, also, hiding money. Let me show you. So, I have a shoe. Shoe. So imagine you get mugged and you, you don't have any food. You've given away your wallet. All your money's gone. All your cards has gone. You don't know what to do. Well, hide your money in many different places. Leave some money at the hostel, wherever you're staying, and hide money. So I often hide money in my shoe. So just underneath there, just underneath the sole, put some money. Because then you're always going to have money. Yeah? That's how I treat my money, I just throw it. So hide money, have like four different places you keep your money so that if you do lose some or you have to give it away to like bribe someone or whatever, you're gonna be all right, you've got backup. There you go. So tip number four, one of the things I love about being solo and walking around the streets of a new city or anywhere is that you're approachable, which obviously has its negatives, but also the positives as well. You're more likely to be approached if you're by yourself because sometimes I literally got asked why are you by yourself? Why are you alone? And I'd be like, I'm traveling alone and they just don't understand. But that means people will approach you. And if they approach you, you're likely to have more experiences and talk to locals. And maybe you might be offered to like come back to the house and have some, I don't know, wine or something. Anyway. But um, for example, in Sri Lanka, when I was solo traveling there, someone literally I was just walking down the street and he was like let me take you for a smoothie and we went across the road we had a smoothie we had a good chat and then we left and that was it I never saw him again but that's an experience I probably would not have got if I was with someone else so traveling by yourself you get these incredible experiences you might not have had otherwise so there you go tip number six be confident when you're going away by yourself You've got to do it with confidence. You're going to be approached by random people, which I said was a positive, but it's also a negative. You don't want to look like you're lost. You don't know where you're going because people could take advantage of you. Hagglers, beggars, all that kind of stuff. So you want to be confident, stand upright, know exactly where you're going before you leave your hostel and just go. Talk to people. Don't be afraid to talk to people and be confident because that's when you're going to get these experiences you would not get in a group. It's also when you're confident and you're traveling by yourself, you're more likely to meet people because you'll happily start a conversation and that leads to traveling with new people. So don't be afraid to just be confident. No one knows who you are. I lied about my age. When I was 18, I was like, I'm so young. Everyone else is like above 22. So I lied. I lied about my age because no one knew who I was. I said I was 23 and people believe you. They're not going to think you're lying. So just be confident, just go for it. No one knows who you are, you can do whatever you want, you can be whoever you wanna be, you can change your name, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is tip number seven, the last and final tip, and this is how to meet people through social media. So obviously, we live in a day and age where you can literally message someone you've never met before and just meet them. I've done this quite a few times throughout different trips that I've met people I've never met just through Instagram, through TikTok, through Facebook groups, and it is a great way of meeting people, and I do recommend it. On Instagram, if you see someone's in the local area and they might be traveling by themselves, maybe they're within a group, just message them, see if they wanna hang out. 
you never know what situation they might want to be in. Maybe they're traveling by themselves as well and they want company. Just give them a message. You never know what could happen. The same with TikTok. TikTok has an algorithm which kind of searches for people near where you are and people who are similar to you. So use it. If you see someone on TikTok and they're, I don't know, on a beach in the Philippines, message them and then you might be able to meet up or whatever, yeah? So use social media to your advantage. And the big one is Facebook groups. Wherever you go, whether that's South America, Indonesia, Thailand, there are Facebook groups for that country. Backpacking Facebook groups. So if you wanna to go to Thailand, Thailand backpacking or backpack in Thailand, there's a Facebook group where people are traveling and they, they've they like signed up to this Facebook group. So you can just join in and see if anyone wants to hang out. When I was in Indonesia, I sent a message when I was in Indonesia, I saw a message in an Indonesian photography group saying, hey, I'm traveling by myself, I'm a photographer, anyone wanna meet up? And I met up with two other photographers who I'd never met before and we traveled for quite a while and it was awesome. Like, do it, because you can meet like-minded people and people are out there looking for other people to travel with. So use that to your advantage. The other thing is, I do have a Facebook group myself. It's called Wing It Travel. I'll maybe put it in the description or something. Join it and we nearly have 300 members of people who love traveling. Some, not everyone's solo traveling, but people are solo traveling and um, traveling in groups. And so they just love travel. Join it and then maybe you find someone who you might want to travel with. Okay, that is all the tips that I have for you today. And um, my seven tips on solo traveling. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, hit subscribe, and just join this amazing community I'm creating helping people to travel the world and hopefully we can get traveling once covid ends and we can just live our dreams again because i'm getting pretty bored down here in england it's just cold and wet january and i'm ready to explore this planet all right guys i will see you in the next video see you later